As any boat owner can attest to, it isn't just crotchety old Aunt Emma that suffers from annoying leaks from the water a boat floats in to the myriad of liquid and gas carrying systems on board, fuel, sanitation, uh, propane, etc. The potential for leaks abound, causing anything from spoiled food and equipment damage to sinkings and even explosions. The sudden appearance of water in the bilge or a mysterious fluid in the engine compartment should be cause for alarm. After all, if you don't know what's leaking, it could be anything, possibly even a warning sign that some vital component is on the verge of failure. Uh, leaks are your boat's way of telling you that something is wrong, meaning it's imperative to diagnose and correct them as soon as possible. When tracking down leaks, patience and careful observations are virtues. Although a good sense of smell doesn't hurt in some cases, such as with fuel or sanitation system leaks, color and consistency of the leak fluid itself can also point to likely sources, coolant and transmission fluid leaks being a good example. Tool-wise, when hunting leaks, you'll need a good source of lighting, such as a bright flashlight or drop light. Depending on the type of leak, other possible items could include paper towels, a wet-dry vacuum, a small inspection mirror, children's felt markers or sidewalk chalk, uh, perhaps a can of soft and dry underarm deodorant. More on the soft and dry trick in a moment here. Bilge water. Water in the bilge is never a good thing, particularly in large increasing quantities. The first thing to determine in the case of clear water leaks is whether the water is salt or fresh. If it's fresh, unless the boat itself is in fresh water, the potable water system is the likely source, discounting rainwater, which could also be a possibility if the water appears after periods of rain. If it's salt water, unless you run aground or otherwise damage the hull, likely suspects include any hull penetration below the waterline shaft glands, transducers, through holes, strut fasteners, and the like. Sailboats can also have issues with leaking keel bolts, while power boats can leak around trim tabs, swim platform mounts, or U-joints and bellows for those with stern drives. If the leak only occurs while underway, the engine raw water cooling system may be a suspect, as well as stuffing boxes for the shaft or rudder. Uh, traditional compression type stuffing boxes for the engine shaft should typically leak no more than three or four drops per minute while underway. However, they shouldn't leak at the dock. Rudder posts may not leak a drop while in the static position, but gush water while underway. Look for the telltale signs of corrosion or uh, vertigris uh, in the case of bronze hardware, which typically signifies a leak. For sailboats, leaks underway when healed could indicate anything from loose keel bolts to back siphoning via a leeward through hull with an inadequate riser loop installed. Uh, bilge pump discharge hoses are a common source of this. Tracking down bilge leaks. Unless you're lucky enough from a leak tracking standpoint anyway to spot a steady stream of water, you'll likely have to do a little investigative work to pinpoint the source of a leak. This can be particularly challenging as the water may drip or become noticeable feet away from where the leak actually is. Tens of feet in some cases. Uh, the first step in locating a non-obvious bilge leak is to pump or vacuum the section of bilge where the leak seems to be coming from. Uh, dry it as much as possible. Then place a folded paper towel in the bilge fore and aft of the area. Wait a bit, then check to see if either towel is damp. If one of the end towels is wet, then the adjacent bilge area is suspect, meaning you simply move to that area and repeat the process. Work through each of the bilge components to locate the one where the water is actually entering. Once you've narrowed it down to one section of bilge, there are a couple of ways to determine where the water is coming from. One option is drying the bilge and covering it with paper towels, then simply watching to see which ones get wet first. Another is drawing a few lines along both sides of the bilge with a children's uh, water washable felt pen or sidewalk chalk. Check back in a bit and look for runs. Then work your way up the hull till you find the source of the leak. Finally, if all else fails, you may want to haul the boat and check the exterior for damage, at which point you can also run some fresh water into the bilge and look for wet spots once the hull is dry. Engine and generator exhaust system leaks. 
Exhaust system leaks are a serious issue, not only because of the potential for catastrophic engine failure they can herald, but also due to the possible introduction of CO into the interior of the vessel, a situation with potentially deadly consequences. Dry exhaust leaks between manifold and the block, for example, can often be found by feeling for escaping exhaust or holding tissue paper near the suspected area and watching for movement. Wet leaks in manifolds and exhaust risers, mufflers, etc., are normally accompanied by corrosion, stains, or running rust originating at the leak itself. Lacking the above signs, another option is to clean the area completely. Non flammable aerosol disc brake cleaner works well. Then spray on the deodorant mentioned earlier and let it dry. This could take five or six hours on a cold engine. Once dry, the deodorant leaves a uniform coating of white powder that not only makes a leak easy to spot, but it's also easily removed. Uh, engine fuel system leaks. When it comes to fuel system leaks, common sense dictates that they must be found and fixed sooner rather than later. For suspected fuel leaks at the engine, this works for oil, antifreeze, or any other engine leak as well, clean and dry the area beneath the engine, then cover with paper towels or oil pads and check for wet areas, bearing in mind that the engine may have to be running to generate the leak. If you suspect fuel fitting leaks, clean the connections with alcohol and tie a little wad of toilet paper or paper towel on each fitting. Go grab some coffee, then come back and look for evidence of leaking. LPG system leaks. If there's any system on board that has to have a no leak policy, it's your LPG or propane system. The best way to check the health of your LPG system is to conduct a leak down test. Your LPG system will, or should have, a pressure gauge installed on the cylinder side of the pressure regulator. The primary purpose of this pressure gauge is not to tell you how much fuel you have in the system, uh, although it will do that. The primary purpose of this pressure gauge is to help you determine if the system has any leaks. Uh, leak down tests are easily performed and should be conducted on a regular basis, weekly ideally, but monthly at a minimum. With your stove valves in the off position, Open the LPG tank manual supply valve and, if so equipped, the electronic solenoid valve to pressurize the system. Then close the tank supply valve, leaving the solenoid valve open. Observe the pressure gauge reading. The pressure indicated should remain constant for at least three minutes. A drop in pressure indicates a leak, which at that point, the entire system should be checked with the leak detection fluid or detergent solution to locate the leak. Test solutions must be non-corrosive and non-toxic. The leak, of course, must be found and repaired uh, prior to retesting and operating the system. A couple of interesting points. One, unless you want top billing at the Darwin Awards website, never use a flame to check for propane leaks. Number two, never use solutions containing ammonia. Ammonia, which is present in some soaps and detergents, can attack brass fittings. Finally, always seek the advice of a professional if unsure how to inspect, test, or make repairs to your LPG system. After cooking, leave one burner ignited and turn off the solenoid or tank valve. When the burner goes out, close the burner valve. This empties the line of gas and prevents leaking should a burner valve fail to seal. It's also a good idea to close the tank valve in addition to the solenoid valve when the system is not in use particularly if you plan on leaving the vessel for an extended period of time. The solenoid valve should always be closed when the system is not in use. Uh, sanitation systems. Your nose is a key ally in the war against funky head odors. However, your eyes play a big part as well. Start by inspecting each of the hose connections for your system, the toilet bowl, outlet, the Y valves, the fittings, while looking for stains, rusty hose clamps, and the like. Give each hose clamp a touch of the screwdriver to check for tightness during your inspection and replace any that are inoperative or otherwise damaged. Inspect the toilet bowl itself for leaks, particularly around the base. If it hasn't been done in a while, consider rebuilding the toilet uh, as a preventative maintenance uh, measure against future leaks. If there are no leaks to be found, the sanitation hose itself could be the issue due to permeation, particularly if the hose is older. To verify this, Wipe a section of the hose down with a clean, damp cloth. Warm water works best for this. And then place the cloth in a Ziploc bag. Then take it above decks into the fresh air to get away from the smells of the head itself. Uh, and then once outside, open the bag and take a sniff. 
it should be odiferously obvious if the hose is in need of replacement. Uh, low spots in your sanitation system hoses can contribute to permeation, so try to keep hose sloping up or down to promote proper drainage. Holding tank vents are another source of odors. Although not a leaky sense, uh, a vent that's clogged or is too small in diameter can also contribute to head odors. <music>